Hey guys, Tyler here. Today we are going to be showing you guys a few things. So in front of me, there is a Toyota Sequoia a mobilizer box. We're going to be showing you how to write a key on the bench. We're also going to be showing you how to do a reflash using the KC501 on this. It's a little, a little bit convoluted just because of the layout of the KC501. We're going to hopefully have a little bit more professional cabling coming out pretty soon here. But just so you guys can understand the process right now, um, here I have the pinout of the KC501, right? So this side is going to be this rectangular slot right here, and this is the actual chip itself. So you can see the circle icon here is marking pin 1. If I lift this connector up, you can see that little divot in the bottom left corner of the chip. That's our pin 1. And basically our wiring is pinned out the same way where one is in the top left hits pin one on the chip two is in the top right hits pin two here three so on and so forth so you can see reds pin one reds pin one blues pin two in the top right blues pin two on the chip so on and so forth and then we have one ground wire plugged into it, this slot right here that says GND. It's gonna be a little hard to see, but it says GND on these last four slots, so any one of those four slots. And then we have the ground plugged onto the third leg from the right on this long device right here. So once you have all of that hooked up, also you'll need this um, DIP8 clip. Unfortunately, with the G2 Turbo, it doesn't look like that's included, so you may need to purchase that separately if you're working with a G2 Turbo. But these wires will be included in that for sure. You just need to get the cable and then go on from there. If you are using a G2 Turbo, you will need the power adapter, or basically the, charging, or the charger for the tablet plugged into the cable to power on the VCI while you're performing these functions. So... We're gonna go ahead and continue with this. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is go into special functions, EEPROM adapter, and we're gonna be showing you how to do uh, on the bench first. So if you're trying to perform it on the bench, we're gonna to go to read, write, write EEPROM, KC501, microchip, and then we're gonna select this uh, 93LC66A. The way you can know this is basically if I take this clip off and show you it's not going to be very legible but on the chip is printed 93 LC 66 so this is going to be the option we're going to select go 512 by 8 it doesn't matter read data and it's going to read the existing file off of the um, mobilizer box and it's going to save it by the name uh, it is going to be basically the date and time that you read it out. So we're going to hit yes, okay. It says, do you want to edit it? Just to show that there is data in this immobilizer box. We'll go back. So now we have it read and backed up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to back all the way out. And we're going to go into the immobilization screen. We're going to hit agree. We're going to go Toyota USA. We're going to go key by vehicle and we're going to select Sequoia non-proximity and we're going to select this year range that says 2003 to 2007 and now you'll see first this read EEPROM load EEPROM unfortunately right now the read EEPROM is not working so I, I'll have to get them to correct it which is why we had to go into the EEPROM menu and select it manually to get the file eventually this uh, will report this and get them to fix this to where this works but we're going to go to load EEPROM, right? Hit OK, and it's going to have us select that file that we read, which is this one right here. Again, it's listed by the date and time. So we'll go ahead and select that file, hit yes, and it's going to show you all of the keys that are currently programmed to that immobilizer box. You can see here, key one through uh, three are taken, and then also key five is taken. So I believe one through three are gonna be master slots and then four through six are probably gonna be valet. I don't know that for certain, but if it's all keys lost anyway, 
um, you can just write over one of these slots. Um, if it's out of key, you may need to read the chip, the original key with a cloner and just verify which of these it is first so that way you don't overwrite the customer's existing key. But let's say it's all keys lost. I'll go ahead and select key one and it may be hard to see, but this is actually highlighted. It's not very um, easy to tell, but it is highlighted. So I have key one highlighted right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit input key. It says put the key into the slot. So I have a separate transponder chip right here. I'm going to go ahead and just drop it in the slot right there. We're going to hit OK. And it's going to take the data from that transponder chip and it's going to overwrite slot one. And there it can it will show us uh, the data for it. So you can see right here it says DD7 is the last three of that. And the new chip is 192. <clears throat> so we're going to overwrite the old one and now it changed slot one to the new key. And now that we've done that, all we gotta do is hit this save dump file option and hit okay. Now again, it's kind of broken right now and we're gonna get them to fix it. You should be able to just hit the right dump right here and overwrite the file. Uh, so that way you don't have to back all the way out of the menu, but it's broken right now. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna do it manually. We're gonna go back in special functions EEPROM adapter, read write EEPROM, KC501, and then um, microchip, 93LC66A, 512x8, and then now we're going to hit write data, and we're basically going to flash over the old file with the new file, which should be this one right here, the 0621. Uh, 13, yeah, this one. So we're gonna select yes on that file. We're going to overwrite that file. And now it's written successfully. If you'd like, you can read the data again. If you know what you're looking for, you can see the data will have changed a little bit uh, to re reflect the new transponder chip. But otherwise, yeah, it should be good to go at this point. So all you would have to do is reinsert the uh, a mobilizer back, a box back in the car, pop this in a key, and this will start the car. So now we're also going to show you the reflash if you don't wanna go through that method. Um, so we'll go ahead back out. So if you wanna do a, a virginize or a reflash from this EEPROM adapter menu, I'll go ahead and back out all the way to the beginning just so there's no confusion. We'll go to special functions, EEPROM adapter. We'll go data initialization, Okay, we'll go Toyota, this immobilizer initialization, 4C chip, Sequoia, and it says 02 to 03, but it should say 03 to 07, so that's a clerical error on our part. So we're going to go 0203, and then we're going to select MO box right here. And we're going to select KC501, because we have the KC501 plugged in. Select this option. So before it does anything, it's going to read and back up the existing file on it. So you can name it whatever you want and hit yes. And if I view it, this is the existing file, the one that we just wrote to it uh, about a minute ago. If I hit back now, it'll say uh, file is saved. Do you want to continue? I'm going to hit yes and it's going to actually perform the reflash now. And it's basically rewriting that file to a virgin file now. And now the file, if we go back and read it the manual way again, just to show you. KC501, microchip, 93LC66, read data. Back up, okay, you edit. You can see it's now a virgin file. It's mostly Fs. There's a little bit of data down here that's necessary, but most of it is F, so it's a virgin file now. Uh, so that's that whole process. And since, yeah, that's basically the whole process. Hopefully we can shrink it down. Uh, we're going to report the not being able to read and write from inside of the immobilization screen, and that should cut this process down quite a bit. But that's it for now. Thanks, guys. Have a nice